what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be ranking the Legend of Zelda games from meh to amazing. I will preface this by saying this is my opinion on the Zelda game. I recently played through the franchise. I played through every console game uh, except for Skyward Sword. And this is my opinion of the games. I Most of the games I have never played before. Some of them I have played before especially something like Wind Waker where I played the old version and then played the new version so we can talk about what I think is uh, what I think is good or bad about the, the updates. Here's what I'll say. I, I will say it's hard for me to do any sort of ranking of the first two games because I feel like the quality of the games was determined by the lack of technical innovation or hardware of the NES. But I also don't feel like that the games really stand the test of time. I think super, I think the first Super Mario game stands the test of time. It's probably, the first Super Mario game is probably one of the best games ever made. Because to this day, you can still play the first Super Mario game and enjoy it from beginning to end, all the way through. These two games, I think, are hindered by the fact that they were trying to achieve a genre which wasn't quite there yet on the technical capabilities and consoles that they were on. Uh, so Zelda was essentially an open world R action RPG. Uh, to put an open world action RPG on the NES uh, was a feat in of itself, but I, I don't think it really, it, it's not a game for me that I enjoyed playing all the way through or I think stands the test of time you can play today and still have the same enjoyment you played when you were a kid. Personally, I'm going to rank them both at the same time. Personally, I would say that I like the, the the second one, Adventure of Link. I like that one a lot more than the first one. I will say in the first one, the Ganon fight was awful. It was absolutely awful. I had no idea what I was doing. He was invisible essentially the whole time and you're just supposed to like all I was doing was like spinning in a circle and swinging and hoping I was hitting him. And like half an hour later, I hit him enough times that I I, I won or I was shooting arrows at him or whatever the fuck I was doing. I, I have this issue with a lot of the Zelda games. There's no direction on where to go. Some people are really gonna like that. Some people are gonna say, well, yeah, the whole game is about exploration, man. And treading over the same ground you tread over a thousand times to find new shit and blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, that's great. I'm glad you like that, but I don't. <laughs> I really don't. If I didn't have Twitch chat while playing the first Zelda game, I, I would have given up way early, way early on. Um, so it was nice to have people in Twitch chat that were like, no, 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 go here, go there, go here. Because uh, you definitely need a guide nowadays to play the first Zelda game or else you're going to drive yourself crazy running in circles just constantly. I would say that the only other thing that I felt like kind of took me out of the game was there's a lot of grinding in the first Zelda game, which I didn't really expect to run into. But there's a lot of grinding. You have to grind for rupees to buy potions. And potions are like the major health component because guess what? If you're playing the first Zelda game, you're not getting any health. I played that first game on like half a heart the entire game because no enemy drops health. And I want to hear this bullshit about, oh, well, um, actually, these guys drop health 33% of the time because there's three different items they could drop and it's random. No, 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 no. <laughs> They don't drop any hearts. So don't, don't tell me that they drop hearts. That entire playthrough, I played it on half a heart without the rewind function on NES. That was fucking awful. It, it, was, it was a little rough. It was a little rough. It was time consuming. If I was going to put the, man, the original Zelda game, uh, I don't know. I don't know, it's tough. I mean, I still had fun with it. I still played it all the way through. I do think without the without the rewind function and without the the people in chat kind of helping guide me to where I was supposed to go next, I think I would have given up on it pretty quickly. I might change this later, but I'm gonna go with okay because I didn't hate my experience with it overall. It, I, I I had an okay time. With it. The second game is different. The second game had some boss fights that were very unique, which I really liked where the first game kind of just had like three bosses and they kind of just upgraded the bosses as you went. So they had like a dragon boss that started with maybe two heads and then it got three heads and then it got four heads and it was like, okay, I know how to fight these guys. The second one had some interesting, more creative boss fights, especially 
The Dark Link boss fight. The Dark Link boss fight was really cool. I really like that a lot. You could easily grind hearts outside the temples you were at. You didn't have to continuously like grind on enemies and then go buy stuff and then come back. There, there were spots to easily grind outside of each temple that made that part of it way better. There were some items in Zelda 2 that there was no way that I was going to find them, dude. The way that the artwork is, it's all 2D, right? So it was like, it's like all flat. But then there's certain spots where like under a table is like a black square. And if you if you press a certain button in front of the black square table, something pops out. And it's like, how the fuck are you supposed to know that? Unless you're just like spamming, you know, hit while you're running through a building. Like there's no way you're going to find that shit. So there was some items that were just like, you're, you're never going to find that. Like going by you know today's logic there's there's no there's no way you're gonna find that um i and i do think it was a bit it was a bit easier to um navigate it felt like it felt like the game kind of had roads where you were able to kind of just follow the road and people would tell you like where to go and it, it, it seemed like it had more structure to it of you know this is where you go next here's the next temple it was different but I kind of liked it. I liked it better than the original. So I think I would have to put the Adventure Link in good. Next one up, A Link to the Past. Many people's favorite Zelda game. Let's talk about A Link to the Past for a minute. The bosses and the temples were, were great. From the NES Zelda games to A Link to the Past, I think is a huge jump in both graphics and gameplay. The, the boss fights were cool. I would say the Ganon fight, the Ganon fight, unfortunately, is just a rehash of the original Zelda fight. So that that's a thing that you're going to hear me kind of mention as we go through these games is the amount that Zelda just falls back on stuff that they've already done over and over again, especially boss fights. Um, I don't know how many times I fought Moldorm or whatever the fuck his name is, but I'm pretty sure I fought him in every Zelda game, <laughs> except for maybe Zelda 2. <laughs> Uh, he is in every game. I already mentioned the dungeons were really fun and challenging. All of them were really fun. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember really being like, oh my god, can we like get this over with? And the bosses were definitely more creative overall than Zelda One and Zelda Two. The boss fights were very fun. The cons I had, again, a bit more direction than the first Zelda game. Not a whole lot of direction on where to go. For me personally, not something that I really like. I don't, I don't like being, I, some people really like it. Some people really, really like it. They like just being dropped in a world and like, all right, go figure it the fuck out. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, I, I want, I, I want a little, I want a nudge. I don't, I don't need, I don't need someone like holding my hand through every town, but I need, I need a little bit of like a, a push, like, hey, maybe head over that way. Uh, and this game definitely had that, especially at the beginning where you have like the, the three like charm things or however many charm things you're supposed to get then they show up on the map and you're like okay well i have to go to those three places there there was some stuff that was just like if, if you don't think of it like if you don't think of going back to i think it's your house before you go fight ganon for the last time you're not gonna pick up the fucking light arrows because the game doesn't tell you that you're supposed to go get the light arrows and then you're gonna fight Ganon for 30 minutes until someone in chat says, hey, did you get the light arrows from your house? And I say, fuck no, I didn't get the light arrows from my house. It didn't tell me to. And then they yell at me about not exploring enough and then that fucking shit happens. So there was that. Like I said already, the Ganon fight is pretty much the same fight as Zelda 1 where he like goes invisible and then he, you have to like hit him a few times and then he turns a different color and then you have to shoot him with an arrow you got to do that multiple times until he dies uh it's very similar to the first uh ganon boss fight in the very first game so i feel like it it lacked a little bit of creativity there that might be lore whatever i'm not going to read a book to understand the games i would say that i definitely like the length of the past better than the adventure of link but i don't think it's amazing so i'm going to put it as great so the link's awakening remake I think it's a fantastic game. I think it's a really good game. If you haven't played it yet, if you haven't gotten it on Switch yet, I think if you're a Zelda fan, you're really gonna like it. When I saw the trailer and everything, I was like, this game is only made to sell toys. They all look like they're made of plastic. Fucking ridiculous. Like, Nintendo's just trying to sell toys. And then when I played it, I was like, holy shit, I really like these graphics. They're really cool. They're 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 cute, they're they're cool. 
Um, I, 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 I like the graphics of that game. I think the dungeons were super fun and interesting, a lot like A Link to the Past was. I would say the boss fights weren't as challenging, but they were still pretty fun and they still had good designs. Overall, the game was incredibly fun. Um, I, I, I just, I had a smile on my face the entire time playing the game. There, there definitely were some things that like, there's a delivery quest in the game. You'll, you'll hear me say that multiple times tonight too. There's a delivery quest in the game. Uh, where basically you take one item to another person, and another item to another person, another item to another person, another item to another person, another item to another person. It's like 10 or 12 items long. It's completely unnecessary. It takes way too long uh, for you to do it. It feels like padding, and it doesn't need to be there. Just fucking cut the shit out, and uh, good to go. Just just cut it out. Um, it, it, the delivery quests are so annoying. They're so they just like disrupt the flow of the game completely. And it's it's super frustrating. Um, so it's uh, it, but it is what it is. I would say, and some items, same as in Zelda 2, some items you are just not gonna find without a guide. Like there is, I don't know if you have to find this guy. I think he gives you a bottle. But there's a guy that's under a bridge. Um, there's no indication that he is under the bridge. But somehow, if you just happen to go under the bridge, there's a guy there who will give you like the last bottle for the game. Uh, I, I really like this game though. Like I said, I just had a blast with it. I thought it was super fun. I liked the graphical style. I liked uh, the gameplay. The story was great. The story in that game is so much better than the rest of the Zelda games apart from maybe one or two of them. It is awesome. Like the whole idea of what he's doing may or may not be real and you're kind of questioning it the whole time. It's like, wait a minute, what, what's going on? Like, it, is what is this real? And then at the end, with like the whole, you know, reveal of what's happening and everything, it's so good. Like, and it's dark too. It's good, and the themes are are kind of more mature and a bit darker. Um, and it, I just had a lot of fun. So I know this this is gonna trigger some people, but I thought that game was amazing. I'd play that game again in a heartbeat. I thought it was great. Let's talk about Ocarina of Time. I think Ocarina of Time is uh, is is really good game. I, I like the mechanic of going back and forth in time, and going from like adult to kid, and having two different two different planes of existence in which one plane affects the other one. Because it, it really makes you think about what you're doing in the one you know as a kid, so that you can you can do those uh, upgraded kind of type things when you're an adult. I like the t all the temples in the game. I like all the bosses in the game. I would say that my my favorite bosses were definitely uh, Shadow Link or Dark Link. Phantom Ganon is also a really cool fight. I don't really know why, because it's kind of annoying. But at the same time, I think it's kind of cool when he's like when he's coming out of the paintings and you have to figure out like, oh god, which one is which one's real, which one's not. And you're like you're scrambling to try and figure out what that is. It, it kind of adds a little bit of like suspense uh and i really like when when boss fights can can make you feel a certain way <laughs> in my notes the dungeons are fun and well designed apart from one and then my first con note is the water temple is fucking abysmal <laughs> <laughs> true so true um <laughs> The water temple in Ocarina of Time brings that game down so much. I like the ocarina being used as an instrument, although I never, ever memorized or remembered any of the songs. So I constantly had to go into the menu and and do, you know, figure out what the song was before, before I did it because I could not remember for the life of me what any of the songs were. I know it's I know it's cliche at this point to say the water temple's bad and Navi is bad, but like Navi is terrible. She's constantly interrupting you trying to tell you something and she never has anything good to say. Like she never has a hint that's actually helpful. Like you'll be in the water temple and she'll be like, you know, hey, listen, and then you do Did you know you're in the water temple right now? It's like shut the fuck up! <laughs> I know I'm in the water temple, you idiot! I'm standing in it! Leave me alone! <laughs> But overall, I think the game is really, really good. And I've played it multiple times now, which, like I said, if I didn't think the game was good, I wouldn't play it a second time. And I like that the Ganon fight at this point is very different. You literally just fight him like a fucking Dark Souls boss. 
you gotta roll underneath his legs and you gotta hit him and you gotta it's, it's like you're fighting a dark souls boss it's like you're fighting the abyssal demon in the beginning of dark souls it's like it's literally it's literally a one-on-one -on -one, like dark souls style boss and it, it's really good i like the fight i think ocarina of time is a really really good game did, do I have do I get as much enjoyment out of it as I do as I did Link's Awakening? Oh man. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to put it in great. But I'm going to put it in front of Link to the Past in great. I think they're both great games, but I think Ocarina of Time is just a little bit greater than A Link to the Past. Majora's Mask is a is an interesting Zelda game. I will preface this by saying that I played the 3DS version of the game, which is considered the bad version of the game. Okay, I, I my experience with Majora's Mask is not entirely a good one. Um, I it it does have some some positives, but I have I have more cons than I do pros. So let let's let's go through these. I enjoy the darker theme of the game. I like that they're willing to go there. And I like that this game goes there uh, and that you're essentially ripping the faces off of dead people and putting them on your face and transforming into a version of them. And then like going through the world uh, looking like these these other people. I think the graphics of the 3DS version is is a is a large step up um, from the 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 N64 version, in my opinion. I, I think I think the graphics were really quite good i really like the use of the masks being able to use the masks and change into that character and then using that to like go through the different temples and figure out different dungeons and uh, uh puzzles and stuff like that i thought that was a really cool game gameplay mechanic i really like that but i would say that there was a there was a fetch quest or a trade quest or whatever it was about 70 percent of the way through the game that i thought didn't need to exist it took way too much time out of um, you completing your your objective and your just playthrough of the game and it, it extended that portion of the game which you're just you're just trying to like get to the end and then it's like no you have to get this and give it to them and then give it to them and then i'll give you this and you give it to them and it's fuck stop doing this like stop giving me the trade quest please they're so fucking annoying like it, it sucks when a game is just like oh yeah we're just gonna completely stop what we're doing the world stopped don't worry I know you're trying to save the world, but don't worry, everything stopped so that you can do four hours of trade quest. Okay, you excited? It's like, no, I'm not excited. It makes no sense to me. The world's fucking ending. Why why do I have to give, you know, Jim Bob his fucking beans? Like, who cares? One thing that's very weird about Majora's Mask is the bulk of the actual quests in the game are all side quests. They're all uh, unnecessary to be able to beat the game. And the only reason, like gameplay wise, that you would do it is to make the final boss like super easy. Because if you 100% the game, you do all the side quests, you get the mask, then you can get like the ultimate fairy mask or whatever it is that makes the final boss like super easy. So your main bad guy essentially is the mask, right? But there's another character in the game uh, that you're supposed to feel sympathy for, which is Skull Kid. The Skull Kid is kind of taken over by the mask and then kind of turned into this creature, like used by the mask to, to become like a villainous character. And then at the end, when when you save him, you're supposed to feel bad for him. You're supposed to be like, oh, I'm so sorry this happened to you. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, I kind of didn't. I didn't really care because you'd never see Skull Kid. Skull Kid's in the game at the beginning. He's in the game at the end. <laughs> and, and you never really get to see anything other than the first cutscene and the last cutscene. There's really never never anything in between that you get to learn more about Skull Kid and like his story and build some empathy for him and like who he is. So at the end when it was like, all right, we're supposed to feel bad for him now. I felt bad because I was like, well, yeah, he got used by the mask. That's pretty fucked up. But at the same time, it's like I didn't really care all that much because there wasn't anything to resonate with because he doesn't really get much of a like fleshed out story to really draw you into his character and what happened to him so it was just kind of like meh the whole mechanic the main mechanic in Majora's Mask is the time mechanic the time mechanic is essentially a timer you're basically on a timer in which you're supposed to do 
as as much as you can within it within a certain time frame. And if you don't finish within the time frame, then you have to do it again. So it's kind of like this. It's like a Groundhog Day thing. It's like if the time runs out, then you start over from the beginning and then you have three days again to do it again. And there's ways to slow down time. There's ways to speed up time. There's, uh, you know, but for me, the constant feeling of being pushed like, hey, you know, you're 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 on a timer, like get moving, figure shit out was kind of like, I don't want to feel that way when I'm playing a video game, personally. I'm not a big fan of, like, I don't want someone to, like, push me <laughs> through a game. And I know it's supposed to be like, well, you're supposed to do it multiple times, but who likes doing shit multiple times when you already, like, if, if you get halfway through a dungeon and then it resets, I don't think, I can't say nobody, but I, I, I could assume that a lot of people are going to look at that and be like, well, fuck that. I don't want to do that half the dungeon again. I just did it. And it took me, you know, this long. But it's not going to take you that long the same time. But again, it's like you're just retreading the same the same area over and over and over again. Because you can't get done in the certain amount of time that the game wants you to be done in. So it's like, it's just a constant feeling of feeling pushed. Like rushed. So for me, Majora's Mask is not really a game that I would ever have to play again. I, I, I'm not a person who'd want to play it in like 100% and get all the mass or anything because I didn't really enjoy myself all that much while I played it and the overall feeling of it was not positivity um it, it was it was it was negativity <laughs> I was so ready to be done with it and to play Wind Waker um <sighs> where do I put it I'm going to put it in okay for now. We'll see. Wind Waker is an interesting one. I played a lot of Wind Waker the first time around on the GameCube. Like the first time I tried to play it, I really didn't like the sailing mechanic. I felt like it took too long. Uh, it was annoying to have to like play the song every time you want to reset where, where you need to go and shit. And it was, oh man, it was so cumbersome and annoying. And the whole point of that game is the sailing. Like, it's an open ocean full of, like, where you need to go to every single island, essentially, and unlock stuff and do stuff in different orders and things. So the sailing mechanic is what you're doing most of the time in that game. Luckily, I decided to play the HD version. And holy shit, the fast sail is fucking awesome. The fast sail is so much better. It changes that game completely into what I think is a much better experience, personally. It cut down on so much unnecessary travel time. If you think about it, there's no reason not to make it easy. Like, you're, you're only taking away time-consuming nonsense. Like, you're not, you're not taking away any, like, the lifeblood of the game. I, I'll say I actually like the exploration then with the fast sail, just because it was so much easier to go around. Um, I, I also like that it seemed like when you were when you're traveling in that game you're incentivized to travel because the stuff that you find is is good like it, it's good and it's necessary it was fun to just kind of roll around map out the entire uh, ocean and figure out where you need to go and then solve the puzzles and it was kind of a cool flow of the game once it was kind of sped up just a little bit the final 1v1 showdown against Ganon was awesome Th this is what I said word for word I said the 1v1 fight with Ganon was super awesome, visceral, made me feel like my experiences throughout the game had all culminated into one stab through the skull to finish it. That was badass. Because literally at the end when you defeat him, you stab the sword through his fucking skull. <laughs> and it is so satisfying when you finally get to do it because you he is built throughout that entire game. Like, you see him periodically over time. You understand what's happening. Also, the story in this game was fucking cool, man. Like, it had so many great reveals. Like, Tetra. I'm going to spoil some shit for you here, okay? So, if you haven't played the game yet and you're really excited to, fucking peace out. But, like, Tetra being Zelda? Who the fuck saw that coming? I didn't. Other people probably did. And then, the boat being the king guy? Like, Zelda's father the king the king redbeard whatever the fuck his name is like that guy being the boat okay the cons 
I bet you guys, if you watch me play the game, you probably, you probably already know what I'm going to say. The last temple before fighting Ganon for the last time. Is it even a temple? I don't even know what it is. Holy shit, was that stupid. You had to fight Phantom Ganon like 70 fucking times back to 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 back and he never changed he was constantly the same guy you just fight him like 10 times in a row and he does the same thing every time it's like it would have been so much better if you fought him 10 times in a row and each time he changed it up a bit like you had to shoot him with an ice arrow and then you could go into attack or you had to shoot him with a fire arrow and then it was just like you had to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again and there was no creativity it took forever and it was super frustrating because all I wanted to do at that point was beat the game because I knew that's where I was going. I was going to fight Ganon. I was going to finish him off. And then I had to fight fucking Phantom Ganon. Like, oh my god, that took forever. It was so annoying. My last my last thing would be that some of the bosses relied on the mechanics used in other games. So, uh, same with uh, A Link to the Past and, and um, Ocarina and uh, basically every other Zelda game. They, they borrowed boss fight mechanics from previous games and put them in that game um there there was i mean the fucking volley mechanic is in every single zelda game like having to hit the the balls of light back at ganon is in every single zelda game it's like come on guys like seriously can, can we can we mix it up a little bit like come on it's the same shit over and over and over again why um so i i would say i really did like this game i think it's the best looking zelda game Apart from maybe Breath of the Wild, I think graphically it's the most impressive. I really like the graphics of Wind Waker. I'll put it on the high end of good. I think I wouldn't mind replaying the game, but it's not on like my top tier Zelda game. So I'll probably put it on the high end of good. Twilight Princess is my favorite Zelda game that I played throughout this entire experience. I think it's I think it's easily the best Zelda game, especially in terms of story. I think the story in this Zelda game is fantastic. Um, I really liked all the different, you had your normal like hook shot and shit like that, but there were a lot of other like little tools and things that you got, like the little spinner top thing that you were on. You could like spin around and like move up different things. They just had a whole bunch of different uh, tools and such that you could, you could get in this game uh, compared to just the traditional ones that you could get in older games, which added a lot of creativity. Um, that I really appreciated. I think the story, obviously the themes in this game are much darker. There's like a shadow realm. You can turn yourself into uh, a dog. I Personally, I believe that Midna, Midna is one of the most well-crafted characters in the history of Zelda. Midna is probably my favorite Zelda character out of all of them. I think her character is so well portrayed and written in that game that you can't help but feel like terrible at the end uh, uh you know un until it un until it gets better but <laughs> there's a point in which you think midna is dead essentially that she sacrificed herself for you so that you could survive and uh and then like ganon's on his horse and he's holding midna's like like helmet and you're like fuck like her character is so I don't know it's it's almost like this little sister feeling like you, you don't want anything to happen to her and then when something does you're like oh my god I'm gonna fucking kill that guy like there's there's such a, like a protectiveness that you gain uh, over Midna throughout the story because she's so vulnerable but she puts up this facade of being like you know this badass like I don't give a shit about nothing uh, sort of thing but you realize that she actually does and and she's kind of an outcast and you start to really protect her and feel protective over her so then when the shit starts going down and you can't protect her and then she you know uh sacrifices herself for your benefit it's it's fuck dude like it's probably the most emotion i felt out of a zelda game uh up until this point and i think it's just written really well i think her character is really really good and uh i, I really liked her inclusion into the into the franchise uh, of what I played. The sequence of fights at the end of the game against Ganon was super cool. So I do think that there were some missed opportunities in it. When you first get there, you fight like Beast Ganon, or maybe maybe when you first get there, you fight like a, uh, 
Zelda because Zelda has been like ob not obsessed. What am I thinking? Like taken over. Like her body's been taken over by Ganon or or the the spirit or whatever the fuck it is, and she becomes like this crazy fucking Zelda witch character. And I'm like, oh shit, this is so cool. Like it was such a cool thing that they did, but then it's just wasted. It's wasted because I think they just do the fucking volume mechanic with her. And it's so frustrating because it's like one of the coolest opportunities for you to actually fight Zelda. And then they just they just throw in the volume mechanic from previous games. And you're like, There's so much cool stuff you could do with that. And you just throw the fucking volume mechanic that I've done seven times now throughout playing these games. Like, uh, but the fighting, uh, you know, Zelda, who's been taken over, fighting then Beast Ganon as a dog, because you can switch back and forth between a wolf in the Shadow Realm, stuff like that. So you fight him as a dog, and then you fight uh, you fight him on horseback, which is pretty stupid, but it's actually kind of, it's kind of cool. Like, it's a big, it's a momentous kind of uh, cinematic uh, experience. And then lastly, you 1v1 it. You straight up 1v1 him. And it's like it's like that sequence of events feels very like JRPG because it's it's the same boss that's kind of uh, changing into different, you know, um, different versions of himself and he's like upgrading each time and you're you're fighting him in different circumstances. And that was really cool. I thought that was a really awesome uh, way to end that game with a bunch of different fights. Overall, I just think this story is great. The items were super fun and creative. But there were some things that I wasn't a huge fan of. There's a trade quest. Like I said, you're going to hear that word a lot. We should we just start a counter for trade quest. Did he say it? Yep. Okay. Hit the counter. Um, <laughs> there's a trade quest that's long and unnecessary. Uh, about 70% of the way through the game. Zelda. Nintendo. Can you like... Can you think of something else to put 70% of the way through any of your games? Please. Because trade quests are so incredibly frustrating. And I wasn't a huge fan of... There's a temple toward the end. It's like the Sky Temple, which you have to use like your double hook shot to get around. Uh, which is really cool. You get fucking double hook shot, which is pretty awesome, uh, to get around the temple. But there are certain... There, I think there was, there was an item that was hidden so well that I missed it the first time around. And I ended up having to go through like a whole half an hour section to get back around to like get that item again. And it, it was just like, oh my God, dude. Like the main bad guy for a portion of the game was, I don't know. He was just kind of a throwaway. He basically was just a boss gauntlet for all the things you learned throughout the game. Is like, all right, now you're going to fight Zant. You have to do everything all over again. It's like it just seems unnecessary when games do that when they put you through like a boss gauntlet where you fight the same dudes over again it just it doesn't need to happen like i've already fought them i don't need to i don't need to like unless it's for some reason like a refresher of your memory of like this is how you beat that guy remember you're gonna have to use this later but if i remember correctly i don't think many of the things that i had to fight xant with had to be used like against ganon for instance i think it was just we it, they just put a boss in there that was just a culmination of all the bosses you fought so far which to me was kind of lazy and Zant didn't really end up being all that much in this case the story kind of really outweighed a lot of the frustrations because a lot of the frustrations I have with just about every Zelda game but because the story was so much better than a lot of the other Zelda games it just it just it's it's an amazing game I, I honestly I like this game the most out of all the Zelda games that I played last but not least Breath of the Wild is an unconventional Zelda game. Not, it doesn't fall into the same trappings or the same structure as a lot of the other Zelda games do. Breath of the Wild is a completely open world game. Uh, it doesn't have the temples like previous Zelda games. It doesn't use the same tools like hookshot and compass and all that stuff. It is, it is more of an open world action RPG experience than it is an actual Zelda game. I'm going to be grading it not only on as a Zelda game, but I'm going to grade it also on an open world action RPG because I think you can grade on both and I think that it doesn't stack up on either. Graphically, 
it's it set the bar very high especially for the switch uh, on the graphics i think the graphics are beautiful um, i think it pulls a lot of inspiration from wind waker with kind of the the cell shaded look and the bright colors and uh, everything about it from a graphic standpoint i love i think it's a beautiful game second i i gotta give nintendo credit for stepping out of the box and being creative and doing something different with a long-standing franchise because for years we've seen them do the same thing the same structure the same formula over and over and over again with all of their major big franchises i think breath of the wild was a was a leap out of the box it was way like a like a giant jump off a fucking cliff out of the box and i really appreciate that coming from nintendo it's funny my my next three pros are essentially cons but what i what i would say is i like the divine beasts i think the divine beasts were cool although they were they had the same um what would i say they they had different puzzles in them but graphically and like visually they looked the same they didn't have very much that was different about them and even the bosses at the end of the uh at the end of the divine beast were looked the same like they they were from kind of the same design where i did like them and there were elements of them that i thought were really cool and they the puzzles were pretty challenging for me uh, i mean even the second time through it i feel like i got tripped up on on some of the divine beasts um so i thought those were fun and they were they were challenging i definitely liked those way better than the shrines because those at least felt more like traditional zelda temples and less like just these one-off little puzzles that are scattered through on the uh throughout the world i thought the champions were all cool characters but we didn't get enough time with them there's not enough story in the game to really get attached to the champions as characters there, there really wasn't enough there i would say that the variety the variety in the game is forced on you um, because of the weapon durability system. So it doesn't really give the player a whole ton of choice when it comes to what you want to fight as. Like you can't just say like, I really like this spear, so I'm gonna use the spear because in six hits, the spear is gonna be fucking gone. Whether you like that the variety is forced on the player or not, that's up for debate. If you like a particular weapon, you almost don't even want to use it because you don't want it to break because you like it so much. So it's kind of it's kind of a catch-22. It's like either you like the fact that everything breaks and that it forces you to use other weapons or you'd like to just use the weapons that you like and not be forced to constantly be changing weapons. So it's kind of like a toss-up of whatever you particularly enjoy uh, in your games. Personally, I would... I would have rather seen a Dark Souls type approach where they have a bunch of different varieties of the weapons. They have a bunch of different spears. They have a bunch of different swords. They have a bunch of different uh, shields. They have a bunch of different everything. And then they scatter them throughout the world. You find them as you go. And those are with you for the entirety of the game. You can be a spear guy. You can be a sword guy. You can be a... You can be a shield guy, you can be whatever you want to be, um, but you're not forced to be all of them if you don't want to be. So that's something that I would have liked to see more, maybe an upgrade system on the weapons as well. On to the cons, even though that was kind of a con. I think the world itself is too big. It's too, it's so big that there's so much time just running and climbing and like doing these kind of annoyingly mundane travel mechanics to get from you know point a to point b that i think if they had shrunk the world size like 20 30 percent it would have tightened everything up it would have tightened all like the 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 bad guy camps up it would have tightened everything up to a point where it would have felt a little bit more filled out like there was more stuff to do the shrines are the shrines are interesting the, the shrines are fun for the most part, but they don't have enough variety. I feel like once you've done about six or seven shrines, you've done all the different variations of shrines you're going to see. And there's like 120 of them. So it's like, whether it's uh, whether it's a motion control one where you have to move the ball around, whether it's a, um, a minor test of strength to major test of strength, it's like there's only so many variations until you start to repeat 
and then it's kind of like it kind of loses their muster it's weird to have a progression system that's based on pure you know purely essentially based on exploration because you don't get much progression from actually fighting anything like it's not like you're gaining experience and then you spend experience points to like level up it's like you have to collect things throughout the world and then turn them in and then you get more weapon slots and shield slots and bag slots and stuff like that personally i'd rather it be based on like the actual gameplay mechanics and combat than if it's an action rpg than just purely exploration and finding collectibles lastly i would say that the story they had such potential to tell an interesting story with like actual voice acting and stuff and it's so small like there's hardly a story in the game and the story that is in the game they hide behind exploration so it's like instead of just giving you the fucking cutscene they're like i'm gonna give you a picture and if you randomly run into this area then you'll see the cutscene and it's like wait a minute what like what kind of storytelling is that you have to be like super perceptive when you're exploring to, and remember what every picture looks like and then be able to say like oh this is a picture and then have to go in and do that like it's just weird man like I, I don't know and then the cutscenes that were there were very cool but there's just not enough there like each cutscene is probably only a minute or two and you get to see like Zelda is a very interesting character in the game because she's not she's not just the princess who gets stolen like she she's a fighter man and that's like a really cool interpretation of Zelda, but we, we hardly get to see her in the game. Like she has a few cutscenes. That's it. Like it, it's like, I just wish that they would have put more story into the game. But I also think this whole, this whole idea of like, well, it's a bad Zelda game, but if you don't look at it like a Zelda game, it's a good game. It's like, I don't think that's true at all. I think if you compare it to any other like triple A open world action RPG you know compare it to Assassin's Creed Odyssey compare it to The Witcher 3 compare it to Ghost of Tsushima compare it to like all these games that are fucking incredible and you're gonna say that that game's the game of the decade are you serious <laughs> it's very monumental for Nintendo but if you're if you're comparing if you're comparing it to other games in the genre which would be open world action RPG you're comparing it to like the most some of the most innovative like biggest triple a games that have, that are coming out today and if you're going to compare them then compare them <laughs> maybe from someone who just plays nintendo then yeah maybe but if, if you're going to say that as a open world action rpg that it stands out and is a great game compared to all these other ones it's like no it's not it really isn't so like this whole idea that it's game of the year, that it's game of the decade, that it's it's all this stuff. It's like, I just don't see it personally. I just don't agree that Breath of the Wild is. I don't think it's it's a good Zelda game. And I, if you compare it to other open world action RPGs that are out right now or out in the last five years, it doesn't stack up with them either. I don't want to be like a contrarian that puts it in meh to like stir shit, but I think I just explained all the reasons why in a, in a very like concise and in-depth way this is hard though because obviously i would rather i would rather play breath of the wild again over playing the original zelda again unless the first zelda was meh and breath of the wild was meh and and majora was okay and then the rest of them were what they are i think that might be more indicative but yeah this this would be my list um, it was it was a lot of fun going through and playing all the games. I, I thought I thought playing all the games was really fun. I liked going and playing a series that uh, a lot of people have played before, but I really haven't. I, I thought Twilight Princess was the fucking standout. I'm so happy that there was like a there's a HD HDified version of it. Um, I'm I'm really happy that Link's Awakening got a remake because I got to experience that, and that was uh, those two games for me are the are the best two Zelda games that I played. Um, during that whole playthrough. I think I need therapy or just some more whiskey. I can't seem to understand how you do this to me.